Uh, here is the inside of the motor controller. And that black plastic there, it's not just a cover that just pops right off. It's held together by more things in there. And I thought, boy, this would be easier to check out if it weren't in the car. And I'm looking, and I think it's pretty much just three bolts that are really uh, holding the motor controller in. And if I pull the controller out, I can have a better look at the... Uh, down at the motor too. So I'm going to pull those bolts out and see if I can pull that entire uh, motor controller out as a unit. So I just pulled out these three bolts and sure enough that box is loose but those battery cables are still connected and then there's a bunch of wiring and some coolant lines that I'm going to have to undo. More now that we have a fan. <laughs> Okay, there There's we go. We just second floor underneath that. pulled the motor controller out. That'll be the brains. Okay, well, fun to have that thing out. Now we can play with the motor. Okay, you ready for power there? Okay, there's power on from the breaker through the 240 to uh, a little VFD down here. So the first thing we got to do is put it into local control. Okay. And then tell it we've got a frequency, and then we tell it to run. So the run is lit, and now we should be able to give it some RPMs. Okay, I hear something. I see a fire tire moving. Okay, one. Oh, it sounds funny. Sounds like techno music. So we are spinning one wheel. The other one's not going. This wheel, when it was in neutral, felt like it didn't spin as easy as the other. Well, we just tried using this little uh, VFD here to uh, control the motor directly. Just uh, hooked right onto the motor uh, cables right there. And unfortunately, well, we were able to get the, the motor to spin and the wheels to spin, but not very fast. Um, also, it seems like this, this wheel spins nice and free, and this one over here has a little drag on it. So it might be, it sounds like maybe the brake dragging on there or something. But uh, there might be something not quite right with the motor or the transmission. And I'm looking at it, and this whole thing is kind of a big subunit. I mean, it's got a bolt. You pull that bolt out there, and there's kind of, you know, some matching connections in the front. And it looks like it would not be very hard at all to drop this entire thing out of the car. I think the worst I'd have to worry about is um, getting these out first. So, I don't know. Maybe i look up how to do that, and maybe... We can drop the electric motor and the transmission, just that whole thing, boom, right on out of here, and uh, take a look at it then. We'll see. Here's the back side of the motor controller. I just took out all the bolts that uh, hold the, the, the back or the bottom cover on, and I'm going to do a little gentle prying and break that, uh, break that seal, and we'll see what we see. Oh, that doesn't look good. Well, there's one reason for an electric car not to work. Uh, this was the bottom side, so sure enough, the top half of the controller looked really good, but, uh, oh my. All sorts of nastiness in here. Lots of salt, lots of corrosion, lots of yuck, 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 yuck. This would have been towards the front of the car. The two battery cables come in here, and the three-phase wires come in here. They had a different type of an O-ring, and it looks like all the water came in with the battery cables. And the uh, motor controller is kind of multi-dimensional, and there's, there's holes that go to the other side of the motor controller, which would be the down, the bottom side. So it looks like water got in through the batteries, then it went through inside, and it ruined all the circuit boards at the bottom. But I guess the one upside is that 
this stuff up here looks good, and I guess that's um, some big IGBTs under that, so who knows, maybe I can pull those out and use it as the guts to uh, build an AC motor controller. Paul, are you listening? You want to help me with that?